Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about Chargaff's rules. In the early part of the 20th century, there were many, many scientists working on the question surrounding DNA. And namely, they were working on first, what is the genetic material in the cell? Because it wasn't always known that it was DNA. And you may have heard of some of those experiments experiments by Griffith, by Avery, by Hershey and Chase, and others that found that DNA was the genetic material in the cell. And then, of course, there were additional experiments later by scientists like Watson and Crick, Wilkins, Franklin, people I'm sure you've heard of, who elucidated the actual structure of DNA. And today we're going to talk about the contribution to those experiments by a scientist named Erwin Chargaff. And those contributions are what are now known as Chargaff's rules. So let's talk first about rule number one. Chargaff found that the DNA composition varies from species to species. So DNA varies from species to species. This was important because it indicated that DNA was a more credible candidate for the cell's genetic material than protein. At the time that this work was being done, protein was considered a good candidate for the genetic material of the cell. One of the reasons for this is that DNA is made up of only four nucleotides, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, whereas proteins are made up of 20 different amino acids. And so it was thought at the time that that greater amount of amino acids could explain the greater diversity between species, but through the work of Chargaff and others, it was determined that actually DNA is the genetic material of the cell and not protein. Now, rule number two of Chargaff's rules is probably the one you're more familiar with, and it is that the number of adenine and thymine nucleotides, so A and T, are equal in a species DNA, and also that the number of cytosine and guanine nucleotides are equal in a species DNA. And so that means that there were as many adenines as there were thymines, and there were as many cytosines as there were guanines. Why is this important? Well, this piece of evidence here, rule number two, was instrumental in helping Watson and Crick whom I'm sure you've heard of, determine the double helix structure of DNA. If we look up here at a basic model of this double helix structure, we see that it looks almost like a ladder with rungs. And each rung is what we now call a base pair. And each base pair is made up of two nucleotides, either adenine and thymine connected by hydrogen bonds, or cytosine and guanine also connected by hydrogen bonds. And so you can see how in this model, for every adenine there's a thymine, and for every cytosine there's a guanine. And so it was this piece of evidence here, determined by Chargaff, that helped Watson and Crick, along with other pieces of evidence from other scientists, develop this double helix model, which has since been confirmed by microscopy. So these are Chargaff's rules, and that is how they helped in determining the structure of DNA. So that is it for today on Biology Professor. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned a lot.